The runtime principle gives a range for runner relation for a catchment. It uses the principle that every time a new area contributes to the runoff at the outlet. Say we have a sloping area divided in three areas, A1, A2, and A3. And each drains completely to the river or the next area in the runtime delta T. And we have a rain intensity of P1 that lasts delta T as well. P1 over area 3, P1 over area 2, P1 over area 1. Then first area 1 will drain into the outlet. Starting at T is 0 and finishing at delta T, T is 2 delta T. The discharge Q1 at delta T is 1 equals P1 times A1. Next area 2 will follow with Q2 equals P1 times A2. And again, delta T later, area 3 will follow. Q3 is P1 times A3. And the total discharge, the hydrograph, will look like adding up all the contributions. Note that the total runtime of the full area is three times delta T three times delta T but that the discharge is zero again at T is T is four times delta T as a last bit of rain falls at t is 1, that's when the last rain falls, and still needs 3 times delta t to reach the outlet. When the rain p1 of duration delta t is followed by P2, so P1 P2 P2 this is 1 followed by P2 P1 P2, also of duration delta T, we 
we will see at a certain stage areas simultaneously draining. First we will see only A1 draining from P1. and Q1, Q1 equals P1 times A1. At delta T is 1, we will see area 1 start draining from P2. Area 1 start draining from P2 and area 2 will simultaneously start to drain in the outlet from P1 so area 2 will start draining from P1 Hence, Q, Q2 is the sum of the two contributions, is P1 A2 plus P2 A1. At delta T is 2, area 3 will start to drain from P1. Area 3 will start to drain from P1 and Area 2 from P2. Area 2 from P2. Hence, Q3 equals P1 A3 plus P2 A2. And at delta T is 3. Area 3 will start to drain from P2. And the other areas have no longer a contribution. So Q4 is 0 plus P2 times A3. And the total hydrograph will look as the sum of all the contributions will be like this. So far, we have seen not all areas contributing at the same time. Therefore, we need a rain that lasts at least as long as the total runtime of the catchment, which in our example is 3 delta T. Now assume we have rain P1, P2 and P3. Each of duration delta t. So we have P1 P2 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 
and P3. And each has a duration of delta T. Then Q1 is P1 times A1. Q2 is P1 times A2 plus P2 times A1. Q3 is P1 times A3 the contribution from area 2 and the contribution from area 1. At this moment all the areas drain. But Q4 has no longer a contribution from A1 and P1, only from P2 and A3 plus P3 and A2. And Q5 has no longer a contribution from A1 nor A2, but it's only from A3. And Q6 has no longer contribution from any area and equals zero. Now, if we assume that P1, P2, P3 are equal, and for example, have the rain intensity P and A1 has the same surface area as area 2 and area 3, the equations will become P times A for Q1, 2 times PA for Q2, 3 times PA for Q3, Q4 2 times PA, and Q5 PA and 0 again. How will the hydrograph look like? The maximum discharge occurs at three times delta T. Note that in this case, indeed, this discharge is zero after six times delta T. S, the last rain occurs, the last rain occurs here at three times delta T. And it takes the utmost part of the catchments, the runtime, three times delta T to reach the outlet. 